Hello and welcome. My name is Trey Brimmer. I'm with Mitel. Today I'm going to go over the 6920 IP for the ACD users. Uh, we're going to go over the lay of the land, make sure you understand where all the buttons are located, and we're going to go over the uh, features that are available to you on that phone. I am briefly going to go over voicemail, though a lot of you do not have voicemail, but if any of you end up having a, a voicemail box, I'm going to quickly kind of go over the lay of the land on that and make sure you understand how that works. It's at the very end, so um, if you don't have a voicemail box currently and you don't need one, then um, you can just uh, disregard the last portion when it starts talking about voicemail. Here's a few things to remember as you move forward. Um, some of this will be similar to how it works now. Some of them might be a little different. Uh, the first thing is you'll need to dial nine before uh, dialing an outside line. Um, you will also need to dial the area code and phone number uh, for an outside line. So nine, area code, phone number for all outbound calls. You'll no longer need a one for long distance dialing or 800 dialing. Um, but if you do, out of habit, put the one there, it'll still work, no problems. Remember that when you're dial 9 and 1, uh, you're very close to dial 911. If you accidentally dial 911, don't hang up. They'll dispatch usually if you um, dial it and hang up. And it might be confusing the way the um, caller ID goes out, what number to dial to get to you directly. So uh, someone might not know why you dialed 911, which means that they will dispatch. So if you accidentally do dial 911, stay on the phone and just let them know you dialed it uh, in error so they don't send someone out. Um, the default ACD agent ID that you'll use will be the same as the PIN you'll use. And as you're logging in through the phone, it'll ask you for the extension number or the agent ID. And when you plug that in, it'll ask for a PIN. The PIN will be the same. The only uh, time that will change is if you have a voicemail and you go in to set that up initially, uh, it, your agent uh, PIN will then mimic whatever your voicemail PIN is. So those numbers would be the same. Um, otherwise, it's going to be the same as what you put in as your agent ID. Um, keep in mind that most of you will not have a voicemail box, so you won't have to worry about that. You'll just put in the number twice, basically. And I'll show you how to do that here shortly. Group presence will be on the phone. Um, you should be in, if you log out at the end of the day and you log in the next day, all the all the groups that you are currently present in will, present in will be lit up still. Um, but if you remove yourself from a group or add yourself in for the day, that uh, you'll want to manage that. I'll kind of show you what I mean, but there's buttons for each of the groups. I, uh, as we go through the presentation, I'm not sure what the names are on all those. You probably know what they are, the numbers. Uh, so I just said group presence, so you'll see where they're located. But keep in mind that those should be lit up for the groups that you want to receive calls in or you need to receive calls in. Uh, make busy should be used during the day. So basically the process should be you log in in the morning, you log out at night, and in between you're going to use make busy to let uh, management understand if you're going to the restroom, taking a break, you're doing paperwork, whatever the case may be. Uh, so I'll show you how all that works. And when you use the make busy, um, you will hear dial tone. So when you press the key initially, you will have to hang up the phone. So if you're jumping up really quick and you need to go, make sure you hit that and then hang up the phone uh, because it'll be on dial tone. Okay. Let's take a look at the phone itself. This is what the 6920 IP phone looks like. When you're uh, looking at the other phones, they're going to be very similar. Uh, the 6930 just has additional keys. Um, and the 40 is a touch screen, but basically works the same. So if you learn how to use this one and you end up with a different style of phone for some reason, you'll still know how to maneuver through the phone pretty much. Um, so uh, the way it works is the very top of it has your display and the staggered keys that you see to the left of the display um, are you know, correspond with what's written on the display. And then the very bottom of it has four keys. This uh, is... And kind of coordinated with the gray strip that you see. And this will allow you to access different features as you're, depending on what part of the call you're in. So kind of at a d dynamic area. Next to that, you'll see a little circle that's called a navigation tool. That'll help you navigate through the different screens or if you're going through call history or contacts or something along those lines, this comes into play. I'll tell you when it does. Uh, so you understand how it'll work. And then you'll notice below that in the gray area, uh, there are your standard dial 
pad is there, but on either side are buttons with icons on it, uh, which represent different functions that the phone will do. And we'll go through each of those starting at the top and just working our way down. So let's go ahead and um, look at this real quick, the navigation tool. It's that silver uh, button that I pointed out on the kind of the right-hand side of the phone below the display. And what you're gonna do on that the outside ring is to navigate left, right, up, or down. And the very center of the key will allow you to select. So if you were going into your call history and you scrolled over to a name, I could hit the center of the key and dial that person. There will also be soft keys available to you on the display, under the display, the bottom, that will also allow you to dial and, do, and, and that sort of thing. But this is a quicker way to do it. Um, hot desk uh, ACD into your phone. Basically, uh, ACD agents, uh, you'll see the term hot desking. It's just a way of logging into your phone uh, with the system. Uh, maybe a little different than you're used to. Uh, so let's take a look at it. First of all, you'll know when you're not logged in because of these signs that you'll see. First of all, the extension number or the agent ID up at the very top will have a pound key in there somewhere. I, I, I choose a second um, octet, but it could be the third or fourth, but you'll see a pound key in there. Also, the phone itself will say locked. And then there, at the bottom, you'll see that the, the uh, one of the soft keys down there says hot desk, and it's going to be the far left-hand side. Uh, if it ever says hot desk, it means you're not logged in. You're not ACD hot desked into the phone. The term hot desk is just used because you can pretty much set it any phone and log in and take over that phone uh, within the organization. So it's kind of an open seating availability, even though maybe you don't move around. You know, you could be in the same place. But to hot desk into the phone, it's going to be very easy. The way you'll do it is first you'll press the key that says hot desk. Then you're going to put in your agent ID or your extension number, whatever you, you wanna call it, but the number that's associated to you. Uh, you'll press in that number, you'll hit enter, and then it's gonna ask you for the pin. This is where you're just gonna put it in again, the extension number again, or the agent ID that you have. So you just repeat it again and hit enter, and it'll allow you to access the, the um, phone. If you... Um, do have a voicemail initially you'll do this step anyway and once you are logged into the phone you can set up your voicemail and that'll change the pin that you use so if you uh, log in with uh, your extension if we use this as an example 3021 then um, my pin would be 3021 once i set up my voicemail if i made it one two three four that would then take the place of my pin um, so that's how that works once you are into the phone uh, you will automatically be placed in a make busy status. Uh, the reason for that is, is that way you can get in a little early. You can log into the phone. You're not immediately being inundated with calls. Uh, so automatically when you log in, you're going to be automatically placed in make busy. Um, so you'll see that make busy in the center there. So you'll know that you have to turn that off. Uh, to turn it off, you're going to uh, use your navigation key and you're going to press to the right to go to the next page. You'll notice at the very bottom there's three little dots and you can see you're on page one of the three pages that are available. When you go to the next page, you'll see that it says cancel, it'll say MB cancel, make busy cancel. And when you press the key, it'll then turn off and allow you to, to receive calls. So that's a process you're gonna have to do daily. And then you can hit the arrow back to the left and go back to the main screen. Um, but that's the process to make yourself available for inbound calls. Here's the main screen again. Um, we're back at the first page, and I want to tell you what's here. So first of all, your agent ID or the number that you ins you logged in as will be uh, posted at the very top in the blue on the left-hand side. You can see that the very top has no uh, keys associated to it. It's just I informational, basically. Um, if you wore a headset, you would see a headset symbol show up on the phone as well. So you'll see that as a symbol. But you can see there's a little fellow there um, over towards the right, and that's just telling you that you're logged in and to the phone. Uh, the little ricochet is that you have four calls that you missed. There, you shouldn't really see any calls that you missed. The one thing I do want to tell you is if you um, miss a call, for some reason, you're receiving calls and you don't answer one of them and it moves on to somebody else, it will log you off the phone. So you'll have to log back in, hot desk back into the phone. Uh, so keep that in mind as you're moving forward that you want to make sure that you use that make busy. Um, 
So uh, that way you don't have to log back in every time. Eventually they would look at a report and might say, boy, you've logged in, you've logged in 20 times today, what's going on? And they'll realize you've missed calls. So you wanna make sure you make yourself busy so you're out of the flow and that way you're not receiving those calls. Working our way down, it says my phone. My phone is your inbound line key. That's where all the calls are gonna come to when you have ACD calls. We do have an outbound uh, line. This is for you to be able to make a call. You know, if you have a um, ACD inbound call coming to you, and um, uh, you need to place them on hold to ask a question, you can then press that uh, it's outbound line key and dial an extension or an outside line if you need to dial someone else. Uh, so it's just giving you access to that. Keep in mind that if you are for some reason doing callbacks, say you're calling customers, you wanna put yourself in a make busy status so you can use the outbound call key because uh, you will still receive calls if you use that key and you're on the line. So if the first key where it says my phone is not uh, being used then, and you are logged in and available and you are not in make busy, then inbound calls will come regardless if you're on that outbound line or not. The uh, next four keys are for the different queues you may be a member of. And the reason why I say queue name there is because it'll be different for each of you depending on what queue you're a part of. So you should see the queue name or the queue number there. Uh, so that way you can know. When you press the key uh, that corresponds with the label, it'll turn it on and it'll turn blue. So you'll know that you, you can see where it's blue and it says on just before it says queue name on there. If it says off and it's gray, it means you are not in that queue. So no calls that go to those that are gray will come to you. So you wanna make sure uh, a supervisor can add you in and out of queues, but you wanna make sure that you have the proper queues that you're supposed to be part of. And a queue would be things like, you know, you're a part of a special group, you know, or your, your main focus is this group, but maybe sometimes you join another group, a Spanish speaking group or something along those lines because you speak Spanish and you, you can help. Um, so that's what that is. Um, so the, you'll see all your queue names there and that sort of thing. Uh, going over to the center, there's kind of a display area there. That'll give you color identification when inbound calls come. It'll also tell you things like you're in Make Busy, like we saw. It'll say things like um, when you're on a conference call, that sort of thing. So you're going to see that. And you'll see that when the phone is idle like it is now, it's offering you a redial. That's going to be anything you've dialed. Uh, the last thing that you dialed will show up there. So outside or internal, it doesn't matter. So if you want to quickly redial, you'll see that there's down at the very bottom, there's a redial key. The, that gray strip that you see um, is dynamic. So right now it's only offering you the things uh, that you can do while the phone is idle, like it is here. You can log out of the phone, that's logging you out as an agent, or you can go ahead and redial because those are really the only two things you can do. You can also, you could just pick, pick up the phone or using your headset, hit nine, dial the outside number. That's also something you could do while the phone is idle. But otherwise, um, it's not gonna give you options like transfer or anything like that until a call is actually received and answered. Um, so I'll, we'll, we'll look to that bottom quite a bit as we go through the phone so you can see the different changes that happen. And this is a lot of the control you're going to have on the phone, you know. So I want to make sure you're aware. Also, I didn't really talk about, but in the center, it has the time and the date will always be displayed there. So that's available to you as well. Um, these are the pages. We kind of looked at that before. You remember, you have to go to the second page to cancel the make busy when you initially log in. But um, these little dots are what represents each of the pages. You have three. Uh, you'll use a navigation key uh, and you'll go ahead and either go forward or backward, doesn't really matter. But um, if you go to the right, it's going to take you to page two and then page three. If you go to the left, it's gonna take you to page three and then two. So whatever you wanna to get to fastest, you can decide which direction to head. Um, but let's take a look at that. I'm gonna go ahead and go to the next page. Here's the next page, and you'll see that the very bottom was where our uh, cancel was that I showed you. But the top ones are different reason codes to make yourself busy. So if you need to go to the bathroom, make busy code there, lunch, break, or paperwork. So those are a couple of the codes that you guys have. And that way you can just hit the button. A warning on that, when you hit the button, it doesn't ever display the reason. It just says make busy. So you will have to hit the right one. And if for some reason you're not sure if you hit the right one, I really wanted to say break, uh, not lunch, 
then you could just hit it again and it will take over for that, you know? So you can change in midstream, but you will hear dial tone when you press that. So you'll wanna go ahead and hang up the phone right afterwards. And your display, when you go back, should say make busy on it. When you get back to your desk from your break, you'll just go to the make uh, MB cancel. That'll cancel the make busy and you'll be back in the flow to receive calls, okay? The next page over, if I, if I go back, go over one more page on page three, uh, these are some speed calls that have been added for you. Um, so the different departments, I guess Spanish uh, is in their damages. And then you have Mark in there and Tony. Um, and so these are the different um, uh, kind of quick dials for you. So you can press the button and get a hold of those people very quickly. Okay. Um, so that's what that's for. Um Let's talk about how to program a key. As you can see on the phone, you have very few keys. There was one open one on page two, um, but I'm just gonna show you so you know uh, what you're looking at. Uh, if you have a larger phone or if uh, you wanna program that one button. Um, the way you do it is just like you do in your car. You just hold the blank key down and this will pop up or it'll say programmable key. In the speed dial, you can label it you know, whoever it is, and then you can put in a phone number, either an extension number, or you can put in the nine area code and phone number for an outside line. There's only one of those, so I don't know if you'll ever use it. You can mark it as private, which means it won't show the phone number. So it's just a place you can go. Um, you can also go to other features, and there's a few features in there, but you're not going to need any of those. So uh, it's kind of a waste for you. Incoming calls or uh, incoming in intercom calls. Those are gonna look very similar, except you'll see the person's name and extension number rather than probably the company name that's calling in. Um, but let's take a look at what that looks like. So here comes an inbound call that I haven't answered yet. You'll see where it said my phone near the very top on the left-hand side, it now says the phone number. And then in the center of the display, it has gotten rid of the redial because an inbound call is coming in and it's offering the uh, caller ID. Um, you'll notice also on the soft key area, the very bottom, of those four keys, it, uh, it no longer offers you to log out. It's offering you an answer. If you're wearing a headset, you'll hit the answer key to answer the call. Makes it very easy. Um, and uh, this is what it looks like when an inbound call comes in. Now, when I've answered the call, the caller ID will always stay settled into the, um, where my button is. So I'll always remember. You don't have a lot of other keys you won't have any other inbound calls coming in, so um, you don't have to worry about other caller ID coming in, but still, you'll see the caller ID before you answer it and after you answer it. Here's now that you've answered it, you can see a timer has started to tell you how many seconds you've been on the call and or how many minutes. Caller ID stays up there on the key. Uh, caller ID stays in the center, telling you the caller identification name and number. And you'll notice that the gray area at the very bottom has changed. It's offering you now transfer, add user, or end the call. So um, add user is setting up uh, a conference call. Uh, so if you have a call and you need to conference uh, supervisor in with you, you could do that. Um, you can also just transfer the call if it's for somebody else. Uh, so that's how that works. So let's kind of talk about transferring the call. Uh, the way to transfer a call is uh, you have, you've you picked up the call, you're on the call with the, the uh, customer, and now I want to transfer it to somewhere else or somebody else. Um, you can transfer it very easily by hitting transfer, dialing the extension of the person or the agent ID of the person you need to transfer it to, and then hitting transfer again will complete it and send the call along. Um, so it's a pretty easy process. Transfer the phone, the extension or the agent ID of the other person. Transfer again, and then it'll uh, complete. If I hit transfer and dial the extension or the agent ID, whichever one you want to call it, and then I stay on the line, I will hear that person internally's phone ring. And then when they pick it up, I can have a private conversation with them, probably similar to how it works now. And then if when I'm ready to send it along to them, I could go ahead and hit transfer again to complete it. Um, you'll notice that the transfer is there to complete it for a transfer call, but it also says join calls. Join calls is the next key over. That means that 
even though my intention initially may have been to transfer the call to you, there may be an, a, a situation that comes up where someone says on the other line, hey, can you stay on the call with me? And we'll go through this together. Then I can just hit join calls and that would join all three of us together on the call rather than transferring it. So it's a decision you can make at the last minute. Um, trade call, uh, trade calls means that I will go back to the original caller, but I won't have canceled the transfer. So let's just say a scenario comes up where I hit transfer and dial your extension and you pick up and you say, ABC company, who is it with ABC company? I can say, hold on a second. I could go to trade call, jump over to the person I initially was talking to with ABC company and say, who are you with ABC company? Oh, okay, Justin. Hold on one second. I can hit trade call again, go back to you. It's Justin. Oh yeah, I'll take that call. Then I hit transfer and it's complete. So it gives you some flexibility to bounce between the callers without actually canceling the transfer and having to start over. Now, if I needed to, to cancel the uh, transfer and start over, say I hit transfer and I dialed your extension and you said, no, I'm walking into a meeting. Can you tell them to call me back? I can hit back to hell. That will cancel the transfer completely and I'm back to the original caller and I can start over. So. If I do that and I decide to send it to you anyway, I would have to hit transfer again and then dial your extension and hit transfer to send it. So back to help will cancel out the call, just so you know. And you can see again, the timer's running and, and uh, everything's going on there. Let's talk about making a conference call. It's very similar to transferring the call. Uh, the big difference is, is you're, you're making uh, a decision that you're adding people on. And this could be someone who has called you or that you reach out to. So I could reach out to uh, somebody on call their extension or call the outside number, and then I can begin adding people in. Now you can add up to eight people on a conference call, you and seven other people. Uh, it can be a combination of internal and outside numbers. Uh, it's up to you on that, but it's very easy to do. So the way you do it is it's almost identical. The call rings in, I've answered it. But instead of hitting the transfer, I hit add user. Add user is going to allow me to set up a conference call uh, with that user, okay? So um, I'm gonna go ahead and hit add user. I'll put in uh, the phone number for the outside person or the extension number. I wanna add us all together. Um, and you'll notice when we were doing transfer, I could have added user there. So kind of the buttons do the exact same thing. You can see the layout's exactly the same. Transfer, add user, or end call. But it's just to keep you straight. So when I hit add user, it's going to go uh, into this next screen, which is the same as we saw when we we're doing the transfer. It allows me to then dial the next extension number or whatever, and I can hit join calls to join us all together. Once I've joined us all together, I can go through the process again and add another person and another person, um, but that's how that works. Once I hit uh, join calls, um, basically I hit join calls, dialed your extension, uh, or add user, dial your extension or your outside number, and then hit join calls. It'll then say three-party conference on the display and let us know that we're all conferenced together. Now, if I want, I could go ahead and add a user and add a fourth person. I can also split the call. All that really means is that I'm splitting it off so no one can talk to each other. So if I have three or four or five people on and someone's saying something I don't want them to say, I can hit split call. And then it would go back to that previous screen uh, when I when I split the call where it'll say a uh, trade call and I can jump to each of the people and say, you know, shut up or what don't say that or whatever. Uh, I can also leave the call. Uh, leaving the call just means the conference will continue without me, uh, but I need to get off and do other things. And that would be something you might use if you are supporting somebody internally. I'm um, My boss wants me to set up a conference call and then get off the call. Then I could set it up with some outside people uh, add the boss in and then leave the call. So it's kind of a secretary tool if, if you want it or a, a assistant tool. Okay. And, and on all that, I recommend that you just try it in the office, you know, conference in a few people so you can get a feel for it. So that way, if the uh, need for it arises, you'll be comfortable with that process. Okay.
So let's talk below the display and below the navigation key. Uh, what we have on either side of the dial pad are different features and they have little symbols. Sometimes these symbols can be confusing, but if you, if you hit anything, for the most part, it's not going to mess up anything that you're doing. Um, we'll kind of talk about it, but uh, this, that's, we're going to start over on the left-hand side, then work our way to the right. And they are kind of separated in a good way. The left-hand side are more feature-oriented, you know, like... I can look at my call history, I can look at my contacts, I can access voicemail if I have it. I can go into some settings, you know, where the right side is more call handling type features like hanging up or putting on hold or muting. So you're gonna see that there's a difference and you'll probably, when you're dealing with calls daily, you're mostly gonna be dealing with the right hand side under the navigation key. So that's where you're gonna go to maybe answer your call or mute it or whatever. Um, so just keep that in mind as we go through them. Let's start with the contacts key. That's a little person there, a little fella. Um, that's going to take you to personal and corporate contacts. On the personal contacts, they're going to be ones that you have added in. So you can manually add new and put in a name and a phone number or an extension number for people you dial a lot. Um, you don't have a lot of buttons or a lot of real estate on the phone that you can just have a button for it. So this is a good alternative for you to have, you know, maybe departments or people that you dial within the departments on your list. It could be also outside numbers or people that you uh, deal with outside of the company. Uh, this is where your navigation key is going to come into play when you're trying to access those. It'll start off where it says personal. If I want to go to corporate, I'm going to go straight down on the navigation key, which will take me to corporate. If I want to go over to somebody to dial them, I'm going to go over to the right using the navigation key. And when I highlight that person, uh, I can hit the center to dial. I can. It'll also offer that in the, the gray area you'll see as we go along. Um, but this is what your personal contacts will look like. You can also add personal contacts on to your phone by way of your call history. So if someone calls you and you go, boy, I really want to keep that number, I could add them in there to be a personal contact. And then I can modify that personal contact to add another phone number or an extension number or uh, whatever. Okay. So I'll show you what that looks like. So there's your contacts list. Uh, here's corporate. Now, corporate's going to be a little trickier. There's nothing going to be there. So when you're trying to look up another person internally, you're not going to see a listing alphabetically. You're just going to see a blank. You have to put in at least one letter of the last name. This is all driven by last name. Um, but if you're using the MyClab, which is the software that runs on your computer, you'll prefer that over this. This is a little more hands-on, a little more time consuming where you can just start typing in a last or first name in the my club on this it's only by last name and you have to at least have the one letter um, obviously the more letters you put in of a person's last name the closer you're going to get to the match of that person but you can put in a few letters and then you can scroll down uh, until you find that person you know, so I would go over to the right to get away from where it says corporate and then scroll down. When I find the person, I can hit the center or I can hit dial. Um, you can see where it says reset. So I can reset if I type in the wrong last name or I can backspace if I accidentally put in a letter I shouldn't. Uh, you're using the dial pad to put in those letters. So you know how that works. There's three letters on each key. So you might have to hit the key several times to get to the correct letter. Okay, when I scroll all the way over, this is under personal, I would see the, all the different um, phone numbers that are available that you can use. So this is a way you can go in and edit people in your personal list and you can add phone numbers and that sort of thing, okay? Here's the call history. Uh, call history is allowing you to uh, look at your call history of all your calls, either um, everything that in or out you can look at just missed calls, outgoing, or received. If for some reason you get logged off the phone and you're like, go back in, you're like wondering what happened, you know, what, what made me do it? You can look and see if someone called you and you missed that call. Uh, you as an agent shouldn't have missed calls. Uh, you should only have outgoing and received calls, but um, it happens. And if it does, you'll have to log back in to the phone itself. But there's a way you can separate them out, okay? And uh, this is also where you can go ahead and add a contact. So when I scroll over uh, using the navigation key over to the right, I can highlight somebody and then add them as a contact that will add them to my personal contacts. So that way I can keep that number for another time. It saves me kind of some legwork of trying to type in the name and all that. It adds whatever caller identification name is there. 
It can be um, internal uh, contacts or it can be outside numbers. Okay. And I can also dial. You can see I have that highlighted. So if I scroll over, I can dial the person back, call them back. Here's a voicemail key. Uh, that's only really available to you if you have, uh, well, it's kind of available if you need to transfer to somebody's voicemail box, but this is how you would access your voicemail. You'll press that, it'll ask you for your passcode. The passcode will be the same as your extension until you set up your voicemail. It'll take you through a tutorial. Once your voicemail is set up, um, you will use that new pin as your login uh, pin as well to the phone. So when you ACDN, most of you don't have a voicemail box because, you know, callers will call in and you're an agent. And if you're not there, it skips around. It's not going to go to voicemail. So that's why uh, there may be a few. So I, I didn't want to cover it very quickly, but for most part, you can disregard. Here's the settings key. This is where some setups are in the uh, phone. Uh, I'll point out kind of the big ones for you, uh, but you don't really have to touch anything. The big one kind of is the ringer. I think because the ringer starts off with the default, which is kind of a sing songy one. And if you're used to a standard ring, you can kind of miss calls that way uh, by not recognizing the it's ringing, you know, because it might go do, 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 do. And you're like, I don't know what even that means. Uh, so I personally had to adjust my ringer. It might be something you want to do too. So what you'll do is press that button and you'll use the navigation key to scroll over to these different things. The one that's going to change the ringer is the audio setting. Also the audio setting, when you scroll over to that, that. If you use a navigation key, rather than select it, go straight down, uh, it'll give you your input for your headset. So if you're using a wired headset, uh, this is where you could set the audio path up to go to your headset. So that way, when you hit your speaker key, it'll answer on your headset. So it is kind of nice to have that. Um, the first one is call forwarding. You'll never really use that. I'm going to kind of skip through it, but this is the ability to forward a phone uh, to another destination, it won't allow you to do that as an ACD user, so you're not going to really do that. Um, so we're going to skip that. But the audio is a big one you will use. Use audio. Uh, when you press it down, this is where you can change the path, uh, the audio path. So you can have it go out as rather than be a speaker, you can change it to headset, and that makes it really easy to answer your phone by hitting the button um, rather than having to uh, hit the button twice. You can just hit it once. It makes it kind of nice. Um, and I'll show you where that button is. But when you go in there, you can see um, that this is where you change the ringtones. Internal can ring differently than external calling. And um, when you scroll over to the right, you'll hear it play the ring and just scroll down. When you get near the bottom, it's more classic style rings. So if you prefer those, just go to the bottom. There's like one through four or five or whatever. You can pick one of the classic rings for internal, one of the classic rings for external, or both the same if you wanted. It's kind of nice to change your ring up. Um, for internal outside, just so you hear it and you know who's calling you. It would take a little while, but you'll get used to it. Um, the display, the only reason I put that up there is if you don't touch your phone for a while, you get this kind of screensaver, and it's usually dimmed, uh, so that screensaver kind of kicks in. Uh, you can adjust that screen saver by uh, going into that display and changing the screen. I, I think I was told uh, it goes all the way up to like 120 now or something, or you can do 55, but you can do quite a few minutes. Uh, and that, what, when that timer goes off, it basically will dim the screen and go into a kind of screensaver mode for mostly for overnight kind of thing. Um, so that way it's not using a lot of energy and you can dim the level. If you want a little bit brighter, you can up the level a little bit of what it looks like on the screensaver. Um, but if you put it out far enough, you'll never see it. You know, that's the idea that you use your phone enough that you probably won't, you probably have a call in an hour. So um, you can adjust that. Also, the brightness level, you can adjust if it's not bright enough on your regular standard display, you can move it up to five or whatever. And those little arrows that you see in the gray area is how you're going to adjust those when you highlight them. So you use a navigation key to line, line uh, to uh, land on it, and then you can go ahead and use that arrow up and down to adjust the levels. Uh, the minutes for the screensaver, you can just type that in using the keypad and hit save. Okay, I'll play with it a little bit, you get the idea. Here's your volume control, so everything's separate. If you pick up the handset, you're adjusting that volume. If you turn on your headset, you're adjusting the volume for your headset. And then um, if the phone rings, while it's ringing, you can adjust the uh, ringer volume. So the first time you get a call, you can adjust the ringer volume up or down and then pick up the phone, it'll save it at that volume. 
let's talk about the right hand side. So this is more like I was saying earlier, where the other side was like features and settings. This is more uh, call handling tools. Uh, the first one is hang up. So this will allow you to hang up. You'll notice on that soft display we looked at, it does say end call there too. But if you like the buttons, you can hang up here if you like. The nice thing is the very bottom key is the answer to the speaker. Uh, or the headset. So you can use that speaker key down at the bottom. Um, the newer, the picture I have here doesn't do it justice because now it has a little headset and slash speaker on the very bottom key. Uh, so it'll give you an idea what to hit, but that's to answer. And this key up top is to hang up. And that's all it does is hang up. <clears throat> okay. Uh, this is redial list. Remember on the display, it said redial and it gave you the last number that you dialed. What this does is it takes you to your call history, your outgoing call history list. So maybe you want to call back the second or third person who called you rather than the last person. So if you hit that, it really just takes you to call history and straight to the outgoing and it gives you the list of outgoing calls that you made. You can use your navigation key now, scrolling over to the person you want to redial and hit the center of the navigation key or the soft key you'll see below where it'll say dial. Uh, dial. Okay. Next key is your hold key. It looks like a little pause. When you press that key on your display, you'll see it shows up in kind of a yellow uh, and white, and that'll blink back and forth between yellow and white. You'll see that some action there uh, to let you know. And then you just hit the corresponding key to recover it from hold. When you have a call on hold here, you won't receive another call. Okay. Um, it's holding on your line. But remember that if you make an outbound call, say you're calling customers using the outbound call key, then you want to make sure that you are in Make Busy because that leaves that main key open. And you will receive calls even if you're trying to receive, you're on a call and you'll be receiving another call and it'll log you out. So it's important to remember that um, you need to make yourself busy if you're going to make outbound calls. Okay. And you probably like choose paperwork or whatever, and that way you can make your outbound calls, just so you know. Okay. All right. So next is your mute. Mutes the handset or the headset or the speaker, depending on what you're using. Uh, you just press it to turn on, press it again, turns it off. When it's lit next to the key, you know you're muted. You can sneeze, cough, whatever you need to say. You can say it, they won't hear it. And then you just hit the button again and you're back in the mix. Um, the next key down is your headset or speaker key. So to answer a call inbound, you'll hit that key and you'll notice it also has a corresponding soft key up top. It'll say it right under their answer. But if you're more comfortable with the big key, you can hit that. When you hit it, it'll uh, answer the call. Uh, remember that you change the audio path in your settings to headset rather than speaker by just going to where it has the audio, the little speaker and going down rather than hitting enter. And when you go down, it'll say audio path, make sure it says headset and the way you'll go and make sure you test everything. Uh, you know, have someone call you or pick up your, your call, you know, dial out to make sure it's over your headset. So you're ready to go for the first call. Um, now for you people who don't have voicemail, you can disregard, but uh, for those of you who have a voicemail box, usually this will be uh, more support staff rather than agents, but uh, the default, uh, Voicemail pin is the same as your extension. Uh, to set it up, you'll go, you'll press the uh, voicemail key that we talked about, and then it'll ask for your pin, and your pin's gonna be your extension number. And once you put that in, it's gonna take you through a tutorial. The tutorial is uh, going to help you set up your name, set up your uh, message, and pick a new pin. And remember that pin is important because not only will it be the pin to get into your voicemail, but it'll be the pin that you use going forward uh, to access your agent, uh, your phone, basically your hot desk at ACD. Um, so keep this in mind. There are people out there who um, merely are support up the, you know, you don't really need um, to uh, be on calls every day, but when it's real busy during different seasons or whatever, you may hop on to be helpful and uh, you'll want to, you know, basically set up a voicemail box because you may get calls in. So you may be set up a little bit different than the other phones that you saw on here, but it's going to be very similar and you'll probably be out of the groups at, when you're logged in. Maybe you won't log out every night because you're not really an agent. Um, it's kind of up to everyone to decide that, but that's how that works. 
Here's a flow sheet that will be available. I've already sent it up to the gang there at your office. But uh, the boxed area are all the different ways you can access your voicemail. Um, and this flow sheet will be available to you if you have voicemail. Uh, it will, you can access it from your desk like we talked about or away from your desk by calling into anything automated and in star. Uh, you can also um, dial from um, another person's desk and I'll show you how to do that if you're standing somewhere and you want to access your voicemail. Um, the main thing I wanted to show you about this is just the layout of it. So that's that's how you access it. And then the rest of it's kind of the voicemail flow, how, how you what happens, what is available to you when you're in the voicemail. There's only three things. You can play messages, you can make messages, or you can go back into your user options and change things like your greeting, your name or your passcode. You can go back through the tutorial again if you wanted to. So that's the main things under where it says P for play up top. Um, and it says the seven key up there in red are some cheats. They're basic uh, rewind uh, five seconds increments. So that way, if someone says, call me back at three, five, 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 and you're like, what? You can hit the star key and it'll back you up five seconds. Uh, you can fast forward, which no one uses by hitting pound. And you can pause for 30 second, second increments by hitting one. So those are just little cheats. Otherwise, when you push the play, it's gonna tell you what messages you, how many messages you have, and it'll begin playing the first one. Once you've listened to the messages, you always have the ability to give it to another user. You can answer them. That means it would call them back by caller ID. You can keep that message or you can discard it. Um, the other thing that you can do within the system is create a message to send to somebody who has a voicemail box. Most agents do not have voicemail boxes, so sending them um, messages will not work. But if somebody internally, a manager or whatever, has a mailbox and you want to forward a call over to them or call them and leave a voicemail message for them, you can do it without dialing their extension uh, and disturbing them. Anyone who has a voicemail box, when you call them, it'll, their phone will ring three times or four times and then go to voicemail. So if I don't want it to ring those times, I could just go to uh, press six or the M key uh, to create a message. I'd put in the person's extension and I can record a message and then I can send it to them. I can also make things uh, like address make things like confidential, which means they can't forward it to anybody. I can get a return receipt to hear when they listen to it. I can mark things as urgent, which will tell them there's an urgent message and move it to the front of their list. Um, so you can also rewind and append the message as you go along. And then the user options we talked about, change your greeting, change your passcode, uh, change your name. So this is a basic flow sheet of how the voicemail works. So hopefully that'll help you understand the flow sheet. The voicemail itself is not very complex and nor is it um, confusing in any way as far as I'm concerned. You, when you go in, it kind of tells you everything. Um, so hopefully this helps you out to get started. Good luck with your cutover and good luck with your new phones. And if you have voicemail, good luck with that as well. Thanks very much for your time.